Thanks again for joining us today. My name is Andrea Easton and I'm one of the customer success managers here at Martello. I'm joined by Chris Millay, our support manager, and Chris is going to take a look at our new Live Maps mobile app for iOS and Android, SCOM 2019 upgrade if you're looking at that, as well as our new IQ Spotlight, where today we'll take a look at VMware and Office 365 integrations. The format will be as usual. Chris will do a presentation, then we'll do a question and answer. And if during the session you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand or type in the question or just chat with one of us directly and we'll be happy to answer those for you. So I'm going to pass it over to you now, Chris. Okay. Most of the time here will be on the new Live Maps mobile app. We'll talk a little bit about SCOM 2019. A lot of people have already gone through the upgrade process, so I just want to talk slightly about that. One little thing that we know is an issue, I figured I'd go ahead and mention that so that uh, everybody is aware. And then, of course, then we'll talk about IQ Connector Spotlight. We'll talk about uh, you know VMware and Office 365. We'll lead into a question and answer period after that. Quick note, by now, most of you have probably received emails from us, either coming from a civilian vision email address or from a Martello Tech email address, since obviously we've been merging for quite a while now. The end of this month, we are officially transitioning over to the Martello Tech email accounts. Pretty much from this point forward, all outgoing emails from us should be from martellotech.com. However, I do want to point out that the support at civision.com will remain just because it's widely known. Everybody uses it. That's exactly what's going to be coming from any support tickets that you have. I wanted to make you note that it's not going to be an issue as far as getting support going forward. So, all right. So let's go off to the lab like normal, except for this time, not so fast. What I'd like to do is talk a little about mobile, the setup, things that are required just before we actually get into the lab portion itself. First thing, so the new app will only work with version 10.4 or greater. It will not work on if you're on any previous versions. The previous versions will pretty much go by the wayside. No more development will be done on those. When you upgrade and want to use the new mobile experience, you will have to be on version 10.4 or greater. It is only available in Android and iOS. The older one worked with Windows. The Windows phones, of course, even Microsoft isn't even supporting that anymore, but it's funny. I know that there's still people out there that use their Windows phones. Bad news on that front, it's only going to be Android and iOS. Both of them are available on the store right now. A quick note about authentication. When the app itself you know, logs on to a portal, it's basically needing to have first anonymous access to that particular website. Now, we've gotten it to work with Windows authentication as long as anonymous was allowed through. However, not every environment is the same. So the only one that we know that it will definitely work on is uh, if you're set up in forms authentication. Just keep that in mind when it comes to having access to a portal there, because no matter what, even if you've set up Windows authentication, we're technically going to be doing forms on the backside anyway. There is a KB article on this. Everything I'm going to talk about here I've written up. We have a new support portal, so that's why the knowledge base slash numbers is there. However, if you ever want to find it, all you have to do is go to support.civision.com and do a search for mobile. I'll actually do that in a moment to show you what that experience is like and talk a little bit about the support portal and our new ticketing system at that time. And then of note, so this is a complete rewrite from the ground up. We looked at obviously what we were doing in the past and figured out, okay, there are certain things that just weren't weren't the best as far as speed and optimization. For one, we used the Live Maps mobile notification that went off to Urban Airship to uh, actually send off the notifications. That will no longer be the case. So believe it or not, we with the new apps, you will no longer need the Live Maps mobile notification service. In fact, uh, the Urban Airship part will probably be turned off in about six months. We're going to give everyone a six month process to to upgrade to this version. Anyone who is on a previous version at that point in time, they'll actually stop getting notifications. But the other part of this is because we're actually registering the devices in the portal software itself, we actually won't need the Live Maps mobile mo uh, management pack anymore either. For those upgrading to 10.4, the mobile notification service is out of the download section. It'll no longer actually be in the download section of the portal. And for now, the, the management pack on upgrade is still probably going through authentication and tr 
trying to install itself, that will be removed here in the near future too. Basically, it won't be needed anymore. We're not registering devices and storing them in SCOM at any point. The setup itself, now this is, this is kind of a DMZ type setup. It doesn't have to be this way. This is the IIS server that's running the Live Maps portal. This can obviously be on in either one of the sides of the firewall. The only real big difference here is that we're no longer using Urban Airship to send out uh, notifications. We're actually using Google's Firebase. It's a very natural process. Everyone uses it. Yes, we're still using Firebase to send it out to iOS iOS app, so it's all going through that same process. It's a it's a very open process for us to, to fire things, fire through and send things through. That's really the big difference here. As long as the app itself to function, we'll obviously need to be able to hit the portal. I've got a few people that have set up the app and done this internally and then, you know, not given access to the portal to the outside world. The thing there is that even though the app itself doesn't have access to the outside world, it'll still receive the notification. So for those people that are very security conscious, that's always a possibility that you do things, everything internally, and then get notifications as you're away. I figured I'd go ahead and mention that. Okay, so now let's go off to the lab. Portal. So when you install the portal, by default, mobile is off. It's not something that we're going to turn on and keep on for everybody because not everybody uses mobile. Uh, there's no sense generating the, the extra logging and the traffic that we're going to have for that. So to turn it on, it's, it's quite a simple process. If you go into IIS Manager, go into the application settings, there is an enable mobile and enable scheduler. Both of these need to be set to true. Scheduler probably is already set to true in your situation. We actually are allowing you to do certain things. The scheduler runs on like a five minute timer. So notifications are gonna go out every five minutes on state change. Now, once you do that, that brings up the next thing. So I'm gonna come in here. So I'm logged on as a SCOM admin. If I go over to the menu system for, for administration, I will now be able to see the mobile portion of this. Uh, without mobile enabled, it's simply not gonna show up. When I click on mobile, this allows me to see any devices that are actually already registered. Obviously, you wanna set up the portal first. You'll have to log on with the app in order to register it. This is where I break out into another subject. Where before we were doing all the registration of the devices directly in SCOM using the management pack. So those are all objects in SCOM. Now we're not doing that anymore. We're actually locating and registering this on a SQLite database that is in the folder structure of the portal. Because of that, it's on this individual install of portal. We are not currently at this time ready to handle any kind of HA setups for mobile. You know, it, so if you're hitting two different sites, you probably would have to register at two different locations and, and your subscriptions would have to be set up separately. And then, even then you would probably get notifications from two different portals coming out. So you may get double the notifications. So basically the hint to that is that we're not mobile or we're not HA ready for this. There is plans in the works to make it HA. So this is in, in the roadmap. So it's not something that will remain this way, but what we need to do is get uh, live maps to hook into an actual SQL database on the back end and you know, a database of our own that we can handle. All right, so now I'm going to move myself over to here. Um, let's wake up my phone. You can see my lightning shots. All right, so live maps. When I first log on, it did it kind of quickly, so I don't know if you noticed it, but the very first screen is the login information. The very first time you open up, it's going to ask you for web address of the portal. That includes a slash live maps unity portal if you're a child site. Obviously, username and then password. When you log on, your first screen is going to be the business services screen. That is this tab here, and this will show you any and all services that you actually have access to. So if you're setting this up for a user that only has access to a couple services or no services, that's all they'll see at this point. If I move over to the other tab here, this is the dashboard tab. Any of the custom dashboards, those built with the, the authoring console, you'll see any ones that you have access there. So I can scroll through this. I can actually go into, let's go into Bing Maps. You can see the objects that I happen to have in that particular one. And then I can drill, drill into that to see anything that's actually in that one. So there's all these layers of drill down. So I can actually go to DC2. Um, now, this is the components tab. 
So you can continue to drill down through the various sections that you want to. This is the alerts tab. So if I move over to it, that will show me any alerts that are actually for that object. So let me actually get to an object that has, there we go. I know these have alerts. Now I'm able to see any of the alerts here and I can take it one step further and it can give me more information about the alert itself, whether it has any custom fields. So this is obviously expanded information that we didn't have before, you know, the full name. You're getting a lot more details when it comes to the actual objects and the alerts that you were before. And it's quite responsive. I know this is my lab, but uh, you know, really, you know, looking at things, this is quite easy to do. Let me go back to home. So the one thing that's missing here, and I'm going to escape out of this temporarily and go back into the portal, is notification. So by default, when the app is enabled, you automatically have access to the objects and dashboards that you have access to from SCOM, anything that was set up that way. Now, notifications is a subscription. So every user, once they've registered their device in the portal, will need to log on to the portal and there's this user menu. By coming to here, I have the option of mobile. Mobile allows me to set up different subscriptions to different objects. Now, this can be a service. So if I wanna come in here and say, look, I want you know all services or if I need to have a specific service like Exchange 2016 or you know, however the case may be, I can go ahead and do that. The other option here is to go through and have notifications to a custom dashboard. So if I wanted to add in, you know, the Bing Map dashboard that I had before, then I can add that in here, simply add it in there and it'll turn around and show me that subscription. The other thing that's possible that was not possible with our old app is you can actually subscribe to an individual object. Case in point that, yeah, you know, it's great. I have this service that has all of these different components to it, but I'm only really responsible for a couple servers that are in that particular service. Or maybe there's something new that has popped up that that dashboard hasn't been built for it yet or something along those lines. So I can, you know, look at look it up by class. I can turn around and decide that, you know, this is the particular server or the particular object that I want to have access to. And I can simply add that to the mix. That's what this is here. That's why I added this. I added a, a couple servers. This is actually a demo server to, to see these objects. By the way, this section almost not quite, almost acts like a little bit of a favorites list because I can come in here and any one of these I can see the objects for and you can you know, click on it and open it up and go into the object explorer to see other details about that section. So it's, it's almost like a favorites list, but not quite. We actually are talking about migrating this over to a favorites type of functionality at some point in time. So now, now you have that. Now the other thing is I can look at any devices that I have for here. By the way, this is the same thing on the admin side you can actually change permissions, whether this particular device has the ability to log in, whether you want to allow for notifications, whether you want those notifications to be on re recent alerts or on state changes. Now that I've done that, I want to go back into my app. So in the home or in the menu system, there's actually a section in here for subscriptions. You'll notice that the Bing maps that I added in there is already there. So here you, instead of having to navigate through all of that menus or try to find different things, you can actually set up your subscriptions, come in here, see the access, you know, I can go into, in this case, IQ, you know, go into different parts and look at it from this way. You can also go in and look at recent alerts, any re recent alert that have popped up for any of those objects, you can turn around and actually have that in here. So you can just instantly go through instead of having to find the alert or something along those lines, you can actually go for recent alert. So this is our app. This is hopefully how easy this can be. And it is a lot faster. Everyone that's put in place so far since we released it have commented that it's just lightning years above what the old one was. So, which is always a good thing to hear. All right. So I talked about it, but I haven't shown it yet. If you go to support.savision.com, this will come into this login page. If I do a quick search for mobile, uh, that will allow me to pull up and find the, the actual KB article that I'm talking about you know, with links to the actual apps. Again, the same diagram that you saw before, 
but I detail out the, the different steps. And this is that uh, screenshot that I said that will be at the very beginning to have access to, to the particular portal. So just wanted to make you aware of that. By the way, you can also log in, create yourself a user. It should be self-registering. There may be a case in which you tell me that it's not able to log on or something like that. Just let me know. I'll, I'll make sure that you have access. You will be able to log on and see not only your tickets, but your organizational tickets, depending on what organization you're in here. So this is a nice way to keep and keep track of tickets along that way. All right, so that's enough for mobile for now. We'll move on. Uh, by the way, go ahead and ask any questions that you feel like you want to ask about mobile, and we'll go ahead and when we get to the question answer period, I'll start answering those questions at that particular time. Live Maps and SCOM 2019. This is going to be a really quick kind of brief over. A lot of people have already upgraded to 2019. Just want to let you know officially the only one that has support for 2019 is 10.4 or greater. The path is pretty simple. Upgrade SCOM, upgrade portal, upgrade the, the authoring console, and then install the extensions. The only reason why I say install the extensions, I want to come back. Did I have it? Oh, yeah, here. I go into administration and go into the download section here. A, you'll notice that the that the mobile notification service is gone, but the operations manager extension is, is, is a different installer. It's actually an EXE that now instead of the MSI. This was to repair some of the issues that we had on previous extensions, install brand new. This one, by the way, will work on previous versions of SCOM, so it, it, either direction that you need to go there. The other thing I'll talk about, there is a known issue with SCOM 2019, and it hasn't been reported to us yet. We do know that it exists in SCOM 2016 UR6. They made a change in the SCOM console, and if you have a scoped user, meaning that you they have access to the SCOM console, and literally all you've given them access to is maybe three or four dashboards, and that's all they look at. If they try to click on any one of those dashboards, it, they're going to get an error message, and it's going to turn around and give something about create in the error. We've debugged it. We figured out that it's a bug in the SCOM console. It exists in the SCOM console. We've actually we found a couple blog articles that talk about this issue for people that are not Live Maps customers that were trying to set up scoped user dashboards themselves directly in SCOM. So it is a known issue. And unfortunately, there's just nothing we can do to get around that at this particular point in time. But I wanted to make everyone aware that it does exist. We are aware of it. And it only is for those people who are scoped and are trying to look at a dashboard within the SCOM console itself. It is not something that affects the portal in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Now we'll talk about Civision IQ Connector Spotlight. Every user session, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn around and talk about a couple different connectors that, that we have within IQ. Most everyone on here, since it's we've been around with Civision, know Live Maps, know what we're doing with Live Maps, have been around, it's, they're all SCOM users and have IQ and have the SCOM connector into IQ, AKA Alert Management Module. However, not everyone has any of the other integrations. Each integration has its own set of rules and what it can and cannot do. And those are going to be based primarily off of what the SDK or how we're connecting to that system gives us. So with that being said, I'll talk about VMware first. VMware we connect directly to vCenter. So no, we're not going to vROPS or any other monitoring system. In this case, we're going directly to vCenter. We're going to retrieve all host system and all virtual machines. We're looking for healthy critical maintenance mode from what vCenter is giving us. We're also going to tie in the relationships in between the host and the virtual machines. I'll actually show that a little bit when I get into IQ and I get into the lab again. The alerts in vCenter are technically alarms. So we're taking those alarms and we're translating them into an alert. Realize that from that, we can acknowledge the alarm or our alert, but we can't close it. In, in VMware, it's an alarm. You know, it's triggered when a condition occurs. It closes itself when the condition is no longer there. So their SDK does not permit us to do any kind of closing through its operation. So we can acknowledge, but that's as far as we can go. And it's kind of crucial to know on that aspect. So Office 365 is one of our newer ones. Um, obviously, Office 365 is not a monitoring system. So what we're doing is we're actually retrieving the Office services and service features. We're looking at that from the health status on the service and the features themselves. We kind of do a little bit of translation on our own. So 
if the service is listed as degraded or uh, an interruption is occurring, then we go ahead and mark that as a critical. Once the service becomes operational, we'll go ahead and put it as healthy. Same thing as restored and informational available, then that's healthy. If there is no information or the information I should say is marked as unavailable, then it's listed in, on us as not monitored. Extended recovery and you know investigating or restoring service are listed as warnings. So there's kind of the same thing. So we retrieve the relationships between the service itself and its features. You'll see that when I start drilling into IQ and, and how things drill down. Realize any of its service incidents are retrieves alerts from the messages of service incidents, but its incidents are our incidents. So we try to translate that back and forth. You'll actually see where we have alerts on our side and incidents on our side from Office 365. Back to the lab again. Back to the lab we go. All right, so I'll go to IQ. So I create save searches on this just, just to try to make myself a little, make it a little easier instead of doing a bunch of searching and typing. VMware I'll cover first. I'm actually gonna go to the components tab here. You'll notice that my components and my computers are the same thing at this point in time. Basically, we're gonna look at the computer itself, computer, AKA hosts, virtual machine, AKA virtual machine. Kind of works out that way. We will show alerts. So we do show any of the alerts that are coming from there. Obviously you see one that is marked as acknowledged in this case. There are no incidents and there are no groups or services at this point in time. There is talk about actually expanding this to other parts of VMware, but this is where we're at today. If I come into a computer, a host, I can look at the raw properties of that particular object. I can also go back to the source. The source will go back to vCenter itself and allow you to log on and look at this particular object from that point of view. Or I can go into the details of this one. From here, I can see, you know, alerts, you know, any, in this case, alerts only. We don't really have incidents in this one. You know, boards, services, I can look at it from that point of view. This one is actually set up in a couple different boards. Uh, instead of navigating to the boards page and coming through, I'm just gonna turn around and, and uh, go directly into that board right now from here. All right, so what I did is I created a simple rule. You'll notice that there's the rule itself. Basically told it to add any host into this particular box. It allows me to see any host that I have. What's really nice about that is if I come into Explorer, now I can see from my boards page, I can look at all my hosts. If you had obviously more than what I have, then it'll show a lot here. But then I can actually see the relationships going all the way down into the individual VMs. If I need to, or if I have a problem at this particular one, I can turn around and actually go into more details or I can go back to the source going back into vCenter to show that. It does allow you to bring in those objects since uh, a lot of you have vCenter already that are running on VMware. If you have SCOM on top of that, you know, you can add the same objects based on the rules into a board. And now you actually have two objects showing the same object or the same computer, uh, depending on which monitoring system you're looking at. And you'll notice a lot of times each one will monitor things just ever so different. So what might be red in SCOM will be green in, in VMware. So it, it is helpful on that aspect. All right, so let's go back into my services and I'll go into Office 365. I went to the components section on purpose here. Components is gonna show me any of my services and any of the features that are underneath that service. So here you can see the Office 365 portal, administration, exchange online. This was actually, the exchange online was red when I was testing yesterday. It was green this morning and it's yellow now. So we'll actually go play around and go in there and, and see that. There are no computers. It's obviously Office 365 that you don't know what's there. It's, it's up there in Azure. so. So uh, we don't have any computer information on any individual computers that it's running on. I can see the alerts, you know, any alerts that are here. Obviously I can't mark them as closed. If you do attempt to mark something as closed, you're gonna get an error message basically telling you that we can't. So don't be surprised when you see that. If I need to see more information on the alert, I, you can actually see it here. Uh, by the way, any one of these particular uh, places are actually searchable. So if I needed to search by a particular field na name or something like that, I can. Incidents, you know, service degraded. So you, you can see the information, look at the raw properties of, of what's going on on this particular point. Groups and services are just going to break it down into the, just the services themselves. Uh, I'll go ahead and drill into Exchange Online. That seems that's probably the more popular of, of most things of what people want to see. Property values, I'll admit, are a little lacking just because there's not much when it comes to a, a raw property of any of the services that they give us. However, if I go into details, I, I can now look at this and look at the properties, what we see, you know, what its percentage of being up. 
members. This is all of the features that are underneath this particular service. Again, I have an explorer here that actually kind of pinpoints that out and I can see the different parts. Any alerts are related directly to this particular service, any incidents that are related to directly to the service, including ones that you may have created internally. Again, in boards and services are, are kind of the same thing where you can see, hey, here's my board, here's my service. If I go into the, to the Office 365 one that I created at one point in time, you'll see all of the actual component uh, services as they relate to Office 365. And I can expand this out and see you know, exactly what part is having a problem. Again, most of Office 365, and it's the same way if you logged in directly as informational, but it does give you a good point of view of what's going on. This is really helpful, especially when you're trying to troubleshoot certain things. You've got uh, things that are monitored directly in SCOM, like you've got a, a hybrid network uh, where you've got Exchange and you've got SCOM or you're using, you know, you want to add your switches in here so you can see if there's a problem internally versus externally. All of this stuff is, is kind of helpful in that aspect. So that is the way we go with Office 365 and with uh, VMware. Hopefully that was informational on its own. We haven't planned the next user group session yet. The way we've been doing, it's been about every other month. If you have a topic you would like to hear or have a question, you know, after this meeting is over with, feel free to email support at civision.com. I'll go ahead and ask it. It'll actually be included as part of the question and answer notes for this session, as well as the questions that we got from our earlier webinar that we did for European and, and Australian customers. So if you if you have any questions there, go, go ahead and email support at civision.com. If not, hey, that's great too. I want to thank everybody. If you got any ideas, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, if not, that concludes today. Enjoy. Have a great day. And thank you for being here.